Dr. Azan, and today we are talking about different tests available to diagnose prostate cancer. And there is a relatively new one that some are saying that can take the guesswork out of diagnosis and the proper treatment that some may need to have. So it is called PCA3, and Dr. Scott Ackerman is one of the first coast leading oncologists, and today he is here to explain this new gene-based test. So thank you so much for being here once again, Dr. Ackerman. Thank you, Casey. I'll appreciate it. So let's kind of step back. What tests are currently available to diagnose prostate cancer early? Okay, so you know prostate cancer has been the news quite a bit lately. We've talked on this show before about the uh, U.S. Preventive Services Task Force guidelines for prostate cancer screening, and we're kind of de-emphasizing screening a little bit because we have felt that we have been over-diagnosing prostate cancer and providing treatment for prostate cancer in men that would otherwise die of something else and probably not die of the prostate cancer. And so maybe the thought is that by doing treatments in, unnecessarily in slow-growing tumors, that those patients have more problems from the treatment than they would have otherwise from the cancer. So we're currently um, still uh, wrestling with how to do screening, who should be screened, and what we should look at when we do screening. So that's kind of the background okay. for this. So let's talk about prostate cancer screening. Right now, we do prostate cancer screening. I recommend prostate cancer screening, and I recommend it in the context that once you are screened and if you're diagnosed with cancer that you approach treatment or not in a rational and thoughtful way. But I very much promote screening because I think that we should know what is going on with our bodies and knowledge is, is very valuable. So the screening that we do and what I recommend is that men who are age 50 and older who have at least a 10 year life expectancy get screened for prostate cancer. And that screening includes a digital rectal examination. That's the finger wave you hear about. It's where the doctor examines the shape of the prostate, the feel of the prostate, whether there's any nodules, whether it's firm, whether it's hard, or whether it's soft. And also a blood test called the PSA. We'll get to the PCA3 okay. in a minute, but the PSA. And PSA stands for prostate specific antigen. If either the digital rectal examination is abnormal or the PSA is elevated or, or the trend over the years has, has shown a spike now, an a, a, a acceleration in the rise of the PSA. If either of those things are, are, uh, happen, the patient would, I would recommend a biopsy of the prostate to determine if the patient has prostate cancer. So that's the current screening guidelines. The only caveat with that is that I said that starting age 50, if a man is a high risk, and high risk, either he has a father who had prostate cancer or if he is African-American, because African-Americans have a higher risk, double the risk of prostate cancer of non-African-Americans, then I recommend starting that annual screening at age 40. Okay, now let's bring PCA3 into the mix. How does that now play into detecting prostate cancer? Okay, PCA3 stands for prostate, the P. Mm -hmm. The CA is cancer, and then it's a gene, uh, prostate cancer gene three, and this is a new gene-based test where we look at the, where we look at uh, fluid from the prostate, and this is a gene-based test that aids in the diagnosis of prostate cancer. Number one, and if you're diagnosed with prostate cancer, it'll aid in telling us how aggressive the cancer might be. So if your digital rectal examination is abnormal or the PSA is elevated and you want to determine whether or not to do a biopsy or what the real risk of having prostate cancer is, if you're grappling with that, you get the PCA3 test. This is a urine-based test. So we collect the urine. After we do a digital rectal examination, we collect the urine and in the urine will be some fluid from the prostate. And that urine is then spun down and it's looked at under the microscope and they do genetic analysis of it. And we look at specific biomarkers that is in the fluid from the prostate, and this help, helps us to determine whether a biopsy is needed. And the goal of this is to avoid unnecessary prostate biopsies. And so, is this something that you can do if, if you're concerned, like you said, if you're one in, in one of those two groups of people that are at risk for having prostate cancer, can you go to your doctor and say, this is something that I think is important? Yeah, yes, you can. You can speak to your doctor about it, but what the doctor will do is do, he'll do the digital rectal examination and the, and the uh, PSA test. And if those are equivocal, the PCA3 would indicate the probability of finding prostate cancer okay. if you do a biopsy. The higher the PCA3 score, the more likely the biopsy would be positive. So if your P3 
PSA test is very elevated, you're gonna go ahead and do the biopsy. But if it's equivocal, if it's in the mid-range, it'll, it'll um, help us decide whether to do the biopsy if there's a high probability of prostate cancer. And in those patients who've already been diagnosed with prostate cancer, this PCA3 test, as you can see on the screen, mm -hmm. will tell us how aggressive the cancer is and it'll help us determine whether you need to have treatment or not. Because certainly if you have prostate cancer, but the PCA3 test is low, that means it's not very aggressive, and you're older, you can maybe keep an eye on things and do what's called active surveillance. But if the PCA test, a PCA3 test is high, that would indicate a more aggressive tumor and that would, um, a patient would be uh, more likely, I would recommend a patient have surgery or radiation or you know, some definitive treatment for the prostate That's cancer. That's incredible to think how the science has come uh, this far. Uh, wh where is the test performed? Could, would one person go to your office to get this done or how, how does it work? Well, sure, but usually not. Usually okay. it's done by the same, f I, I do do it in mm -hmm. my office. When I see patients with prostate cancer, many of them have the PCA3 test, especially if we're having a discussion about whether to treat or not. Um, so it's usually done by the same physician who, who would do the digital rectal examination and the PSA test. It's covered by most insurance companies, as long as it's done in conjunction with appropriate prostate cancer screening. Well, Dr. Ackerman, thank you, as thank always, you, for being here. We appreciate your insight and expert perspective, and thank you for sponsoring the segment. We're happy to have Dr. Ackerman with us every Friday, and next week we're going to be talking about breast cancer and whether or not you are at risk. And for questions regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you might have, just visit firstcoastoncology.com. Confidentially submit your questions to Ask the Doctor.